ladies and gentlemen, you know, California has been working towards getting reparations for the black community. Well, there have been snags along the way. And now the California Reparations Task Force are concerned over white people qualifying for reparations as well. So under a bill that's signed by Governor Gavin Newsom in 2020, California is looking into possible ways to provide restitution to Black Americans who have experienced the generational effects of slavery. And the state's reparations plan might potentially benefit white identifying individuals, some analysts have said. So the task force members compose of nine people. And they have traveled across the state and developed a reparation recommendations and proposed solutions to its findings, which take into account the harms that Black people suffered. So in March of 2022 report, the task force said those eligible for reparations should be descendants of enslaved African Americans or a free Black person living in the United States prior to the end of the 19th century. In its interim report released in June, the task force was able to determine 12 areas of harm identified as the lingering effects of slavery. So this came from Jovan Scott Lewis, one of the task force members, and they're also a professor at the University of California, Berkeley. So those areas are enslavement, racial terror, political disenfranchisement, housing segregation, separate and equal education, racism in environment and infrastructure. So, you know, and control over creative, cultural and intellectual, intellectual life, stolen labor and hindered opportunity. Yeah, in other words, sabotaging, which they thrive on even to this very day, especially against us. And unjust legal system, mental and physical harm and neglect and wealth gap. Lewis said that the task force was able to identify five key areas that could be supported by some of the compensatory um, framework because of those, the ones that were currently backed by data from the economics team. So the five areas that the team identified was housing discrimination, mass incarceration, unjust property seizures, uh, devaluing black businesses and healthcare. So those issue factors into determining the reparations. Based on housing discrimination alone that occurred between 1933 and 1977, such as a $569 billion in reparations could be needed to pay to African Americans in California, amounting to $223,000 per person. So that is not a guarantee that they will get it. It is just an estimation of what they came up with. Some experts are concerned that the current language of eligibility criteria might open the door for individuals identifying as white to possibly receive reparations money if they prove descendants and meet the eligibility criteria. You can best believe they're gonna do this. These people, 
they smell money, they're going to come running. Okay, William Doherty, a professor of public policy, African American studies at Duke University, told Newsweek that the way in which the language of eligibility requires is worded, it may open the door to the possibility. There is always a problem if the proposal is designed or written in such a way that individuals who are currently living as white, who may have ancestors in two categories, would be eligible for black reparations. So that is a potential problem, Doherty. This is what they said. He explained that if this is the complete language of eligibility criteria, it is possible that an individual who is not living as a Black person in the United States could claim eligibility. Oh yeah, well, you're going to have a lot of $5 Black people, y'all. It's going to be many $5 Black people showing up. So somebody whose ancestors were enslaved subject to chattel slavery somewhere else might be able to come forward too if that's the complete language he said i think it's problematic if somebody who has lived in the world where there are benefits and advantages to being white and who has lived under those conditions makes a claim for reparations, I think that's highly problematic and unethical. Yeah, well, they sure won't think it's that way. You know, they won't. So, you know, well, you know what, the way I see it, then it's up to the task force to clarify things so that those kind of things don't happen. You have the opportunity, if you are sitting in those positions, to fix it. And you should not do anything less. And fixing it, I mean, if you don't have complete faith in what you have written, then that's where you need to access, um, you know, the law and have somebody with a legal background go over it and that way you can attempt to make it airtight where you don't have somebody even from another part of the world trying to qualify for reparations or somebody from another group making claims to qualify for reparations you know so really it's up to the people on that task force to get that right okay so most of the ancestry might be uh, probably from rape of black women and girls said adding the possibility that people who identify as white could qualify for reparations is very problematic for people of another race to be able to capitalize off of that based on a lineage criteria that allows for a loophole for them to be able to apply it's really, well, yeah, you know, but that is going to be difficult. If these folks are in their family through rape, that's going to be really difficult because, see, what these folks did was they legalized their crimes against us, you know, and it's still technically, it's a crime, y'all. It's a crime. But what they did was they wrote their black codes and slave codes and everything to make sure any crime that they committed against us in the law, it was not seen as a crime. But technically, it is still a crime. Okay. I don't care what they say. Technically, it is still a crime. Even if you try to legalize your crime, which America is notorious for doing those things. And it just goes to show you what a big demon you are to sit down and write laws to legalize your crime against another group of people. That just makes you an even bigger devil. That's what it does make you. So, however, Lewis, 
who was a task force member, clarified the eligibility criteria is specific to a Black individual who can claim descendants from one of those classes of individuals. We are talking about people who today are recognized as African-American and who can also establish lineage to African-American persons enslaved in this country or free persons prior to the 1900s. Lewis told Newsweek this week, that's right, you make the eligibility for the community that have a, a descendants from enslaved. If they're pulling out some grandma or some half breed person that came about through rape. No, you shouldn't be eligible for nothing. You know, it, it's awfully funny when other people have gotten reparations, they never ever say it's possible for the African American community to also be able to get in on their reparations. You ever notice that? But when it comes down to us, oh, all these other people can get in on it too. Why is that? For real. That's what we really need to be questioning. When it's anybody else getting it, Native Americans, we they never write in there, well, African Americans could possibly get in on these reparations too. It's only when it's something for us, then it's possible for all these other people to get in. Just take note. So y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.